How's it going everybody? This is going to be a quick and to the point tutorial showing you how to fix the double click issue with the Logitech G502 Lightspeed Gaming Mouse. Now, if you've clicked on this video, you are more than likely very familiar with the problem at hand, being that the switch will sometimes double click or click and hold whenever you only click it once. If this is what's happening to your gaming mouse, it's most likely because the micro switch is going out. So that's what this video is about to show you exactly how to change out a micro switch in the Logitech G502 Lightspeed Gaming Mouse. They need to come up with a shorter name. <laughs> now this repair happens to be quite simple and you don't really need all that much. Of course, you're going to need the most important component, which is the micro switch itself. I'll get into the details on this thing later. You'll need a screwdriver with a very small cross tip on it. And you're going to need a very basic soldering setup, including the soldering iron, a desoldering tool, and of course, some basic solder for soldering on the new switch. In case you've never soldered before, don't be too intimidated. It's actually super simple. And I'm gonna be showing y'all just the basics of it whenever we get to that point in the video. But now that we know what we're working on and what we're working with, let's hop into the tutorial so I can show you how to take apart this mouse and replace the switch. To begin the teardown process, we need to remove three little rubber pads on the bottom of the mouse, here, here, and here. You'll notice there are small little grooves to be able to place a pry tool underneath them and gently pull them away. Make sure you do this very carefully if you plan on reusing them, but if you damage them, don't worry, they're super cheap and easy to replace. I'll add a link in the description below for where you can find them. With those pads removed, go ahead and remove this little plate right here. It's just held on by a magnet, so just simply pry it away. And now you can remove these four screws here, 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 and here. And with all four of those screws removed, we can gently separate the bottom half of the mouse from the top half of the mouse at this seam that wraps all the way around the bottom. Just remember to keep in mind that there are cables attached to the bottom plate, so be very careful when you're prying it apart. To disconnect those cables, all you have to do is gently pry underneath these little white pieces and they will snap up, allowing the cable to go free. And once you have both of those disconnected, this other little wire is just a matter of pinching and wiggling it to gently pull it apart. So now we're working with a top half and this is where things can look really intimidating, but don't worry, there's only nine screws you have to worry about and I'm gonna point them all out. You've got four at the top, here, 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 and here. There's this one that likes to hide behind this little cable. Then three more, here, here and here. And there's this one that's tucked way down underneath everything else. With all nine of those screws removed, we're going to flip the mouse over and we're going to remove this top plate by simply prying at the edge. And we're going to expose this little LED cup. Just remove the one little screw holding it in place and pry it out of the way. And now that we have access, we need to remove these four top screws here, 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 and here. With all that being done, there should be no more screws holding the top shell onto the main board, so gently press on the mouse wheel from underneath while tugging at the board from on top, and everything should come apart nice and neat. Now taking a look at the main board, the most common switch to go out is, of course, the left click, so if that's the case, this is the switch you're going to want to replace. But given I've already replaced that one, I'm going to be working on the right switch today. Regardless of which switch you're replacing, you're going to need to remove a couple more pieces before you can get to soldering. Remove these two screws to be able to remove the middle mouse buttons. To remove the mouse wheel, there's this tiny little pin that you need to gently push out of the way, and then you can pull the entire mouse wheel assembly off the main board. With the mouse wheel removed, there are these two tiny little delicate springs that you need to very carefully remove and set aside in a place where you won't easily lose them. And now there's only seven screws left, here, 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 and here. And now, with all seven of those screws removed, you can finally remove the main switchboard from its plastic housing, giving you access to replace whatever switch you want to. All right, so now it's time for the main act. We need to desolder and remove the old switch, and then solder on the new switch. So to make sure you get this right, I'm going to give you a very brief little tutorial on the basics of soldering. If you already know what you're doing whenever it comes to soldering and you wanna skip this part, then you can go to this timestamp right here and that'll take you to the next part of the tutorial. 
At its core, soldering is a very simple concept. You have a soldering iron, which is just a piece of metal that gets very hot, and you have solder, which is just a metal with a very low melting temperature. So the hot soldering iron will melt the solder and make a nice, solid, conductive connection from whatever pin you're trying to solder to whatever board you're trying to solder it to. Soldering can be very simple or very complex depending on the application and there are many of them. But for this video's purpose, we're just focusing on soldering whenever it comes to removing this old micro switch from the circuit board and then soldering on this new switch. As such, for this specific situation, a desoldering tool can really help out. All this is is a simple mechanism that spring loads a little bit of suction to this nozzle right here so that that once the solder is melted to a liquid form, you press this button and it sucks away that liquid solder, clearing your joint. So now that you know the basics of soldering, let's hop into this scenario and see how we're going to use it to replace this switch. The new switches that I'm going to be using today are TTC dustproof gold switches. They're readily accessible, and I got a two pack of them for only $8.88 on Amazon. I'll be linking those in the description below. Now these are rated for 30 million clicks. There is a higher quality version out there that is rated for 80 million clicks, but those tend to be a lot harder to get a hold of. And 30 million will probably suit you just fine. I've been using mine for almost a year now, and I've had no issue. Now again, this switch right here is the one normally guilty for the double click issue on the left click, but given I've already replaced it today, I'm going to be replacing the right click just for demonstrational purposes. It's the same exact process no matter which one of these switches you're replacing. To remove the old switch, flip over the board and identify the three metal pins that go to the switch you're trying to replace. That would be these three pins if you're fixing the standard left click issue, and I will be doing these three pins over here for the right click. With the soldering iron nice and hot, Go ahead and apply heat to one of the pins until the solder starts to get shiny and then use the desoldering tool to suck away that melted solder. It should only take a couple of seconds to melt the solder, so if it's not melting right away, make sure that the tip of your soldering iron is nice and clean and then try again. If everything goes right and you suck the solder away, you should be able to see the little hole that the pin sticks through and you want that to be as cleaned out as possible. At this point, you should be able to take a pair of pliers or just your fingers and gently pull the switch out of the three holes, releasing it from the circuit board. While the soldering iron is still hot, we're going to move right along to putting the new switch in. The main priority is just to make sure that the new switch is oriented correctly with the small little clicking button facing the front of the board. Then it's just a matter of pushing the little pins through the little holes, holding it in place with something, and now we're ready for soldering. When it comes to soldering the new switch on, you want to be steady and smooth. With the soldering iron hot and a piece of soldering wire at the ready, apply heat to one of the pins for a couple of seconds, and then gently touch the solder to the other side of the pin. The heated pin will melt the solder, and the melted solder will be attracted to the heat source on the other side of the pin. So, it'll form this nice neat little blob around the pin, not only holding the switch in place, but creating a very good conductive connection. And with that, the new switch should be ready to go, fully functional, but there's still the matter of putting everything back together. So, let's do everything we did to tear it down, just in reverse. Put the main switchboard back into its little plastic housing, and attach it using these seven screws. With those seven screws installed, don't forget this little plastic piece, it should look like this. Now we're going to install those tiny little springs, put the entire scroll wheel assembly back in, and hold it all together with this little plastic pin. If you forget the springs or lose them, then your mouse wheel won't be able to click. Next we're going to put these two middle click buttons into place and hold them there with their two little screws. Next, we're finally going to be putting the main board back into the main plastic housing. And this can be a little bit tricky because the left and right click buttons tend to shift around a little bit. So what I do is I make sure that they are properly positioned and then I very gently lower the main board down into the plastic housing. Then to hold everything in place, you need to very gently turn the mouse over and put these four screws back in followed by the tiny little LED shield. Put the little screw in that LED shield, then put the front plate back on, and then rotate the mouse back over. And now we're back to dealing with those pesky nine little screws from earlier. If you need to pause the video, go right ahead because they go right here. 
And with that done, your main board should be firmly housed within the outside shell, so it's time to start connecting the bottom layer. You can start by connecting these little ribbon cables, and while they can be a little finicky to get into place, you just simply slot them in, flip the little white flap down, and if you've done it right, there should be a black mark across the connector and the cable showing you that everything is aligned. Once that's done, it's super easy to plug this little wire back in, and then you should be able to very carefully fold the two halves back together and snap them into place. And now we're down to the final four screws. All you have to do is put these in, then snap in that little base plate, put the little rubber pads back into place, or the new ones if you're replacing them, and that should just about do it. So there you have it. Your mouse should now be back to working like normal, if not better than before, with the upgraded switch inside. Now, there are some ways to go in there and kind of clean off the switch, and sometimes that can fix the double click issue, but it's not as dependable as just upgrading your switch from the get go. And given that a new switch only costs like $3, I think it's worthwhile if you're going to be taking apart your mouse anyway, to go ahead and replace that switch and maybe even replace all the other ones while you're at it. Regardless, I hope that you found this tutorial helpful and informative. I try to make my tutorials as quick and to the point as possible because I know whenever I'm trying to fix an issue, I hate having to sit through a whole bunch of unnecessary BS and intros and all that other stuff just to get to what I actually need to know. So hopefully that effort paid off and I hope that this video was able to help. If you found it informative or if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and hit the like button. If you want to see more videos from me in the future, I make all kinds of DIY content content and just a lot of random stuff. So hit the subscribe button to see more videos. And uh, yeah, other than that, I hope that you have a good day. Stay happy, healthy, wealthy, and wise, and I'll catch you later. <laughs> Peace out.